You said you don't have her um here, her cell number. Yeah. Okay. Hello, uh, Derek Coulter and Michelle Lanier here. Uh, we are here to talk to you about my NC from A to Z. And I am the author and Derek Coulter is the artist. And she is actually in her studio, which is such an awesome um, opportunity for us to see an artist at work. Um, I will introduce myself and then Derek, if you would introduce yourself and then we'll just have a conversation about our journey to create this extraordinary board book. Um, and we are so excited that we're partnering with Flyleaf Books um, and the Office of Archives and History, particularly the research branch, which is so critical to the publication of this book. So again, my name is Michelle Lanier. I am the division director for North Carolina State Historic Sites and Properties. We have 25 historic sites um, from mountains to sea. I am proud to be the first African-American to serve in this capacity. Um, I have deep roots in what I call Afro-Carolina, but um, on both sides of my family, I have North Carolina history. And also I was raised partially in South Carolina. 
Um, I'm a folklorist by training, which means that that's what my graduate degree is in and that's what I do. Um, as a folklorist, I focus on culture and how people express tradition and beliefs um, through uh, words and food and art and buildings and uh, historic narratives passed down through oral traditions. Um, I've been in the museum world uh, for, goodness, um, the public humanities world for over 20 years, but working uh, in the public uh, history world for about 15 years. And I am also proud to be the found, have been the founding executive director of the African American Heritage Commission, which is now under the leadership of the Angela M. Thorpe, uh, who is an amazing colleague. And under her leadership, the African American Heritage Commission has done extraordinary work that's been internationally recognized, including being the force behind publishing this book, My NC from A to C. So that is my introduction. I am also the granddaughter of Anne Grace and the daughter of Margaret and, and James um, and the mother of Eden. And just so proud to be here with you all today. So glad to see you, Dare. I haven't had a chance to with you in a long time. So I'll, I'll mute while you introduce yourself. All right. Hi, um, I am Dare Coulter. I'm an artist. I'm an illustrator. I'm a sculptor. I'm a muralist. And I'm really excited to be here as always. Um, my NC from A to Z was excitingly enough uh, my very first um, published published book. Um, at this point in life, I am now officially a book illustrator. Um, I'm working on projects, but the um, special part of it all is being able to um, know that the introduction was here with this book that is rooted in telling our stories. Um, so many stories that have been looked over and um, you know, even the ones that haven't looked over, just being able to just add a bit more love to them. So um, as an artist, it is with pride and joy that I uh, strive to represent us and I strive to give our narratives a place in art um, and therefore a, a, you know, their proper um, kudos in the world. So uh, this, this project was phenomenal and special for a number of reasons, um, from the team itself to the reach of what these stories, um, you know, where, where they go, the, the places they touch. Um, and the way that these things get to impact, um, hopefully, hopefully lives sincerely. Um, so Michelle, I, I'm delighted to be here with you today. Um, and uh, thank you Flyleaf Books so much for recognizing the importance of um, these stories and particularly for having the space for us to be here and talk about them with you. Yes, um, I would like to um, also shout out our sister, um, Sheila, who is a really critical part of our team. Uh, and it looks like she has actually joined us. So I'm excited to have Sheila. Sheila, we've um, just begun and, and I know that you're so excited to help guide us through this conversation. Um, we've just introduced ourselves. I've introduced myself and Dare has um, begun to introduce herself as, as well. So we're so glad to have you. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Great. Okay. Thank you so much. I am thrilled that you are here. I know you are very busy women. And I so appreciate you taking time out of schedules to join us and to talk about my NC from A to Z. Uh, this is an incredible book. My NC from A to Z was recognized as North. Carolina, uh, 2019 Notable Government Document by the Government Documents Roundtable through the American Library Association and the North Carolina Humanities Council, home of the North Carolina Center of the Book, selected MyNC from A to Z as their 2020 selection. Uh, and it appeared at the Library of Congress National Book festival this year. So I am thrilled. It was part of the Discover Great Places Through Reading list. And it was the first time that the North Carolina Center for the Book had a virtual booth 
featuring my NC from A to Z uh, by Michelle Lanier and Dare Coulter. And in addition to that, if that wasn't enough, uh, <laughs> the first printing of the book sold out in eight weeks. We have never, ever had a book uh, in North Carolina historical research and publications that has sold out so quickly. And uh, the second printing is currently available through our book distributor, UNC Press, as well as other online distributors. So again, can I thrilled I am that both of you are here to talk about this book? Yeah. And we're thrilled to be here. Thank you for having us. Yeah. I'm so thrilled to be here. And um, and Sheila, you were more than, you're more than just someone who we're having a conversation with. I mean, you definitely were behind the scenes helping us think through, you know, how do we get from having an idea of taking something as simple as the alphabet and connecting it to the powerful stories of African-American history, places, events, concepts, um, futures, mm -hmm. um, and histories. How do we connect those dots by bringing in an artist who is dynamic, passionate, vibrant, so committed to telling expansive stories mm -hmm. and healing stories you know, stories of affirmation. Um, it was so important that we work with Dare. You know, I, I had a chance to see Dare's um, mural in downtown Raleigh um, with all of these different kinds of people expressing so many different emotions. And the, it, it looked like the people were going to jump off the wall into the streets and, you know, dance out freedom and create a new world where more people are welcome, more people are safe, more people are healthy, more people are joyful, more people are experiencing love, and then the colors, and then the movement. And I was like, I am going to work with this woman. <laughs> I can't think of anyone else that would be appropriate for this book. And then I had a chance to meet there, you know, at NC State. We were both at this reception. And I said, and then we were also at an event for, um, Dare had a, a show in Raleigh. And I remember we were on a panel together and I just said, I'm gonna work with you. I have a project. <laughs> And Sheila really, I don't think people give enough love and credit to the people who help figure out the paperwork and the bureaucracy and the systems and the deadlines and, and the, <laughs> you know, to get things done. And so thank you, Sheila, for your being, we, we call you the fairy godmother of yes. from A to Z. Yes. Thank, you for, thank you for bippity boppity booing us into this moment. <laughs> <laughs> it is a, I've said this before, so I'm gonna gush again. It is a blessing for me and an honor to work with you and Dare and Angela Thorpe, who is now the director of the American Heritage Commission and Kima Lassiter, and the list goes on and on. Uh, how much uh, love and commitment uh, is involved with a particular book. I'm, I'm thrilled, thank you. Yes, I have to call out a new addition to the African American Heritage Commission family, Adrian Nerde, who Thank is the yes. Yes, yes. associate director, and yes. she's already kind of um, been, become such an amazing gift. I mean, first of all, to the state of North Carolina, being a thought leader, helping to raise awareness around African American heritage, um, but also helping us to program around the book as well. So it's a huge beautiful team i mean dear we've even gotten to know your mother through yes. your mom was awesome through this <laughs> she'd be right here but she had to run to an appointment this morning so um normally she'd be like right here in studio but she is so um i think honestly when she is around this stuff you can't be around the energy of y'all in this team in this project without being excited but um she is a special person because you know she is my my support she's my friend and she's like 
excited about this process and this journey. So it's like she shows up and she's like, oh, we're gonna go do stuff with the book. And she loves y'all and I love y'all, y'all know that. Um, so it's like, it's just a, a really neat thing. And I guess to, to add into the to the gushing here um, with this team, um, it was it was really a great process as far as working on these paintings because so frequently, um, I think a lot of people have situations in art stuff in particular where it's not that it feels good and it's not that it's happy um, and they end up really stressed out. But um, there were moments where, you know, I had shortcomings for sure. Um, and there are ways in which I failed and the team just, they were, they were never unkind. They were always so loving and they handled me with kindness, which um, was so important in the first venture, but it's actually, you know, colored the way that I see everything as far as going into my current career of professional book illustration, but it's like, it was the example of love and you know, luckily for me, I have an agent who leads me with love as well. So I think y'all started this, this happy trend and y'all continued this blessing in my life to be um, surrounded by facilitators who care for me and treat me with kindness. So, um, you know, all of the, all of the, the, the kind words here, for some people, I think they would feel like, you know, it's like contrived, but it's really not. There's so much love between us, between Angela and Kima, this team. Um, and, you know, we really, really got to have a connection that that felt joyful um, over the process of creation of this book. So it, it was it was special, it is special. And you know, I'll always be team Maya and see from A to Z all the time, no matter where. <laughs> well, because there's some, the, I know Sheila, you probably want us to get into the book, um, but there are so many stories in the book that inspire me to um, call out names, to recognize people who have been um, ignored. Um, and to me, that desire to, to say the names of people who, um, whose lives have intersected with um, our communities um, is a sacred act. And it's something that I think has informed, the stories that are in the book have informed how we deal with the people who helped to create the book. And I think that that kind of, intention around witness and humanity and, and, and connectedness and community and embracing each other wholly for our whole stories and exactly who we are and where we are is something that actually comes through in the book. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's been successful. But Sheila, I know you had some specific letters that you wanted to um, call out. I think you're muted. I'm not muted anymore. <laughs> uh, one of the, well, there's a few of them that I'd like to go through and I will run down them very quickly so our viewers can know what they're going to be looking at. One of them is Dr. Charlotte Hawkins Brown. Another is, uh, M is for medicine, uh, medical professionals in North Carolina that have also had a global impact. And also to dares on this video, uh, to your right, writers, W is for writers. Dr. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Dr. Maya Angelou, Charles Waddell Chestnut, Jackie Shelton Green, and George Moses Horton. And you can see the books right there. Uh, yes. And it's beautiful. Yes, I, I mean, it was the process for, you know, each letter is, is very different. You know, some of them are, you know, A is two people. It's um, Abraham Galloway and Anna Julia Cooper. And almost immediately people I have heard go, what, I'm supposed to know who this person is? Who's Anna Julia Cooper? Or who's Abraham Galloway? And then we say, or who is Dr. Charlotte Hawkins Brown? Exactly. And so the, that kind of um, knee jerk reaction of people saying, I don't know who these, these, the, I don't know these names. Absolutely. That's, that's what we, that was our intention is to have people feel that sense of, wait a minute, why don't I know these names? Good question. Let's keep asking why we don't know these names. But what's been really amazing is we had colleagues at the department who created a companion guide that's free, yes. free, and it's online. It's a companion, a companion guide to Mind C um, from A to Z. 
that helps to expound upon the stories um, behind the pictures and behind the words. And so the words are very simple because it's meant for early readers. It's meant to be very attractive. Um, but it's, it's, I also say it's meant for babies of all ages because there's a little one in all of us who feels really excited to have a board book in our hands. Um, but when you go back to, if we could go back to um, C is for Charlotte Hawkins Brown, um, yes. that particular image is really um, important to me. Um, Dr. Charlotte Hawkins Brown, at the age of 19, she started um, a school that became Palmer Memorial Institute. And that school is like sacred for my um, family because I had four, um, I had four relatives to attend Palmer Memorial Institute. And I remember growing up hearing my grandmother who I mentioned before and Grace, um, I remember hearing her talk about that school and how, um, just how, you know, I don't know how much pride my family felt being connected to uh, this renowned black educational space. Um, I think it's extraordinary that it was international. There were students from Ethiopia, from West Africa, the Caribbean, of course, North Carolina and all over the United States. There were students who would get on a train starting as far west as Oregon and keep moving until they got to North Carolina. And so um, this was a, a internationally recognized and respected boarding school for black folks during legal segregation. And Dr. Brown started with a blacksmith shop and a church and kept growing through her savvy fundraising skills um, and, and her commitment to excellence, to black excellence, um, kept growing the school um, to the point where people like Langston Hughes would just drop by, Josephine Baker might drop in, Eleanor Roosevelt, Nat King Cole married into the family and would hold fundraising concerts. Um, and I'm so excited that uh, this uh, space is now a museum space, the Charlotte Hawkins Brown Museum, which, which is one of the historic sites that falls um, under the division that I am blessed to lead. Um, but we see Dr. Brown, um, Dara, can you describe what we're seeing in this image? Because I think it's important to call that out. Absolutely, and I'm gonna switch to the, the zoom in camera so that I can uh, show you guys. What we have here is um, based off of a photograph of Dr. Charlotte Hawkins Brown and her students. So um, a lot of stuff had to do, or the teachings they taught etiquette stuff as well. That's correct, right, Michelle? That's right. <laughs> Yep. Okay. So like, don't want to be wrong. Uh, but this is here, you know, kind of basically off the idea of them um, having one of those experiences where they're learning um, important things about etiquette. And your dare your feed is going a little a, a little it's, unstable. It's just a nice little tea party. Okay. I'll, okay. I'll, all right. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna turn that one off and we'll just yeah. So, so oh, yeah. okay. And if if we can go back to the here so um it's it's them and you know it looks like they're in the sky um but you can see here um there it's her and, and the students that she's working with they're having a tea party um you know so the basis of just just having um the important lessons that she taught were really vital for um people particularly people of color being able to advance um in, in life and, and in position so um it's just a, an homage to her and her wonderfulness and they're in the sky because you know the concept of dreams. Yeah, so a tea party in 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 the dreams of the mind of kind of black educators and students. Um, I love this concept, and I love that you as an artist can take um, this image and then you even embellish it even more through digital work. I, I think that's so fascinating. Um, but yeah, so they're having this tea party and Dr. Brown absolutely had formal hot tea um, in uh, her home, Canary Cottage. You can actually visit uh, Canary Cottage. Uh, we just recently restored the exterior. Um, so I invite people, uh, we, do, we do have folks um, visiting us at our historic sites and we have ways to do that safely so that we can try to you know, make sure to keep folks healthy. But yeah, you can, you can go to see where the tea parties were.
And something special um, to add to that, when we had the actual official launch of the book, we had that at Dr. Charlotte Hawker, Hawkins Brown's um, Homer Memorial School, uh, which is really, really special um, because it's the concept of these things all being around. Um, and Michelle was talking about, you know, stories where it's like, okay, it's not that everything you know about um, just by name. And some people do know all of these things for sure, which is really cool. Um, but a lot of people don't. So understanding that this place is, you know, an hour and some change away, it's not that far um, from, from where I live is really cool because it, it just, it shrinks the world a little bit more in a good way. Um, and I want to talk about one thing too really quickly. So um, when she talks about digital enhancing stuff, um, a big part of the process is something that I think is really um, important in the way that I work is being able to work both digitally and in an analog manner. Um, mm -hmm. So in trying to make sure the book was, you know, for, for bright with kids and wonderful. And actually this is one of the things we had feedback where they handled me very lovingly. It was, there's a conversation of, around the fact that some of the drawings just didn't work. They didn't work because, you know, they were pencil drawings that are, that are grayscale and they're beautiful drawings, but, you know, the ability to make sure that they're, they're colorful and, and, just inviting to children was something that was missing. So for me, it was a good workaround to be able to work with stuff digitally. So um, this is one of the images that ended up being a pencil drawing that got colored digitally. Uh, that one along with W is for writers, um, or not W is for writers, this is from um, Sarah Keys. Sarah Keys, and, yeah. yeah. And this is, this is the pencil drawing that ended up being compiled with another drawing or another painting actually. Um, but the pencil sketches that are really, really neat um, but they get to exist in this world and then their digital format is something different. Um, and even with image for medicine, which we haven't gotten to yet, there's another process of like this digital mix as well, so. Matt, yeah. would you be able to pull up, C is for Charlotte Hawkins Brown. There we are. So we can so see the distinction. The final piece. Yes. So there's the distinction. And so Dare, I mean, this allows us to see how talented Dare is. Mm -hmm. And um, and then move, I guess moving to M is for medicine. How are we on time, Sheila? We're fine. We have okay. about 15 to 20 minutes. And if anybody in the audience has any kind of questions, please put them in the chat. I'm sure that Michelle and Dare, I don't want to speak on behalf of you, but I'm sure that you would enjoy. Uh, answering anybody's questions. So please, oh, yeah, absolutely. please feel free Yeah, so M is for medicine. Um, this was inspired by um, several stories. So I love, I love, uh, Dare's holding up this, the original piece. And then um, we have, um, which is amazing. I mean, the faces alone. Oh my God. These are nurses who are kind of representing the stories of uh, St. Agnes Hospital in Raleigh, North Carolina, which the kind of the ruins of that hospital still stand um, on the campus of uh, St. Aug uh, University, which is one of our HBCUs. Um, the woman in the middle represents the herbal healer tradition um, and kind of the midwife tradition as well. Um, and then also on the right, we have two gentlemen who represent the early history of Leonard Medical School, which was an extension of Shaw University, the oldest HBCU in the South. And Leonard, Me Leonard Medical School was the um, first medical school in the state of North Carolina. And when I say first, I'm not saying the first black medical school, the first period um, in the state of North Carolina. And so, I love that we are leading this image in the middle of um, a woman holding healing herbs. I love that that she is honored as the forebearer of, of the healing tradition in Black community in North Carolina, and that in her footsteps, you have um, the tradition of Black nursing and the tradition of um, of um, Black men and women coming into um, uh, the field as doctors and dentists and eye doctors and later we hear about an x-ray technician but um, their faces are so um, amazing to me particularly the herbal healer elder woman um, I just feel like that determination you can tell they're just like I'm called to heal this is my work I'm determined I'm committed to giving care to a community that was, you know, 
not given consistent care. And we still have health disparities. Um, this, the, you know, we're still reading articles around um, the disparities between how African-Americans are treated um, by the medical industry as um, in, in different ways and not as um, caring ways, particularly around women and childbirth. Um, and oh, I see a question coming in. I know her. So how long did it take us to get the book together? Yes, and I, it looked like there was a second part as well. Um, yeah. Michelle, I think it might be more a you question because I've I've got horrible memory. I don't even know. So I'm going to read the question. How long did it take you all to get the book together from start to finish? And Dare, how long did it take you to complete these works of art? So the concept came to me. I was in a meeting and I was trying to um, stay stay present in a, in a I have to admit, I was in a meeting that was a little boring. <laughs> I was trying to, you know, behave myself. And so I gave myself a little game to play, which was, could I come up with a name or a place or an event that was related to the African-American experiences in North Carolina using every level, letter of the alphabet? And that um, I, after I completed it, I went, this could be a children's book. And I love baby board books, um, early reader books. I remember using them with my own child, particularly if we would be driving in the car, you know, they're kind of almost indestructible. You know, they, they the pages don't tear. You can um, wipe them off if they get um, snack food on them. Um, and they're meant to be loved and lived with. Um, so I kind of started thinking about that. And then there was some funding, that was um, that needed to be spent. Sometimes that happens in state government when you get a, you have a little bit of money that will disappear on you if you don't spend it by the end of the year. And so I met Dara around that time, and I was able to say, let's let's think about this. Let's figure this out. Um, Angela at that time was the associate director of the commission. I had not yet made the transition over to directing historic sites, and Sheila was like, yes, 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 we're going to do this. This is going to be amazing. How many years ago was that? Oh gosh, Sheila, do you remember when we first, when I first reached out to you? We were meeting around August. 2017, maybe? Uh, so eight, no, mm. I started because, because I had, it had to have been 2017 because in, I started with historic sites in the, I think it was, I think it was 2017 when I first, I think the idea first came to me maybe even like 2016, you know, and I, sometime in 2017, I know I started working on the idea and that maybe I met you later, Sheila, but at least four plus years, but the content in terms of being able to work with Dare, for, because a lot of people don't understand this was a very collaborative process. Every single letter I spent time with Dare to say, this is what that person was known for. This is the kind of clothing they would have worn. This is what this place is known for. This is the, this would be appropriate for this time period. So working on his, historical and culturally appropriate aesthetics for each. I don't think a lot of people realize that, um, that the research aspect of it and kind of spending time giving you almost like an intensive of African-American history and culture in North Carolina for several months, um, that was a part of the work that I contributed that then you took and you did the alchemy of turning the, the new knowledge into art. Um, we yeah. got the whole process of actually fact checking. She said there, there are people who, you know, they are very, very um, into particular aspects. So um, one of the things in particular, uh, it was actually about Thomas Day. She's like, look, there are conferences, okay? There are entire conferences. And if this is an inaccurate representation, they will come for you. It's just like, it's not that you end up being afraid of the concept of like whether or not they're excited about what you're presenting. It's that you owe it to you owe the accuracy one to these stories, but also to the people who are excited to actually see this stuff finally be created. So 
um, we had several conversations. I'm looking over here because the let me see. So as this for song, and we'll talk about this a little bit later. Um, the Thomas Day piece that's a part of this one. Uh, we had several important conversations about this piece in particular. So uh, just trying to make sure that it wasn't that there was this gross misrepresentation of what he would have been doing, the way he would have been dragged with his child, um, you know, just just a lot of different stuff. So really, um, the care that goes into that is, um, you know, in part because I don't I don't want a whole conference of people coming for me. But um, secondarily, it's like these are people that Michelle, these are stories that Michelle loves and is passionate about. And the, the depth of knowledge that she has on all of these subjects is like, it's it's wild. <laughs> and so it's like, when she talks about the conversations, it wasn't just like, okay, here's one conversation. It was conversation after conversation after conversation. So the crash course was something that was really special to me because that background is really cool. Um, and even going into the book that I'm currently working on, it's like the research element. It was just really neat to have someone to like, walk through with it who's passionate about these things so there's a lot of stuff that you know and this next one is like there's not that person that's like hey well I'm a, I'm a cheerleader for these things and these stories so um it's really really special to have someone be so amped about just all of these nuances and like that is why this book is so special because it's not just the okay here's a list of stuff it's like Michelle has thought about this stuff intensely she's talked to ancestors about it I'm sure and it's just it's not just the okay well here goes the list, make some pictures, and we're a separate thing. It's like we were hip to hip for the, I think my part was like probably two years of it. Um, and it was hip to hip for those two years. So yeah, that's that's right. Great question. Yeah. So Derek, when, you were, when you were creating your illustrations, yes, in addition to Michelle and Angela and Kima information you are also doing your own research and that research informed how how these paintings look and you're giving these people and we mentioned this earlier in the pre-production while we were talking I'm amazed at how you can use pencil and paint and make these people come alive make these uh, places come alive and talk about that. Um, so a lot of it comes down to um, having feelings about um, people, people and their feelings. So there's, there's stuff that is happier and more joyful. Um, and then there are letters that are more serious and they're even painful. So I think at a certain point, the process becomes figuring out, um, you know, what emotion it is that is important. So um, Ellis for a long week on that one, was a rough one because it, the representation is of a very, very, um, it's a very difficult story. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it isn't this thing where you can just say, okay, here's a man who's making a frowny face and that's it. Um, but beyond that, there are also different ways that joy is expressed. So um, I think for me, what it comes down to is you have, you have to take what it is that um, the emotion that, that is important there and you have to put that energy into, I guess, the nuances of the piece. Um, mm -hmm. And something neat. So, <laughs> The concept of joy, I'm grabbing this one again. Um, so this is the full spread from the original for S is for songs and it ended up being modified in the same way that um, a lot of stuff, my, a lot of things that I create end up being modified process wise. So this one, um, Baba Chuck. Baba Chuck is someone who is incredibly important to not just this local community, but really the international community, mm -hmm. but like regalness and this kindness and this love that he had for people and watching how he interacted with really just everyone, but particularly people that were around him, people who he taught him, who he cared for. It's like putting that pride, it wasn't just about, okay, what his face looks like, it's like his whole energy, right? Um, you know, these people here who are dancing, and we have Deborah Austin, who is um, also a, a specific story. She's, I think, the first Black prima ballerina of North Carolina, and I might be getting that incorrect, um, but, you know, the, the honor of being the first of that, that's reflected in her clothes and her posture and her grace and um, you know down to her hand her fingers went off canvas but when they were supposed to be there it's okay she wouldn't just have clunky hands like this because she's a Valerie <laughs> she's a professional right <laughs> um, you know and, and just being able to tell stories of people that you didn't necessarily know um that's been something that's been an interesting element because I think the concept of putting yourself in the shoes of people who existed at a time um, that was different 
and yours and not actually ever knowing those people getting to talk to those people means that you have to kind of infer a lot and inferring emotions is something that it seems like it's um it seems like it seems like a fluff answer but it's not it's really like you want people to feel a certain way so it becomes the colors the movements and uh trying to just transfer that into the the work so that people feel it when they um receive it yeah so <laughs> It's, you know, Deborah Austin is an amazing story. She becomes the first um, prima ballerina uh, who's African American at a major um, ballet company in the country. Um, so when we think about Misty Copeland, who is really um, in the tradition of Deborah Austin, um, you know, Misty Copeland makes history in New York certainly, and um, and has gone on to capture our attention. And, and it was really important for us to honor Deborah Austin, who calls North Carolina home. There, when you were creating W for writers, yes, and we mentioned Dr. Maya Charles Chestnut, Jackie Shelton Green, and George Horton. So you were speaking about emotion, and what were you trying to? What were you wanting? What was the intent of? that particular painting? Um, so, okay, this particular painting had a lot of, um, we'll say, we'll say sub, sub ambitions, right? Um, so, okay, but one of the things that I just said, I know I have to kind of take it back. Um, I know one person <laughs> in this painting and that's Jackie Shelton Green. Um, and oh gosh, she is, she's, I think she's like this tall, but her hair is this big, her hair is taller than me. Um, and she is the first black, Poet Laureate of North Carolina. And not only that, but she's been doing her work for decades and she's wonderful. Um, so to be able to say, okay, I want a person that I know who's represented in this piece to feel honored and to feel cherished um, by this illustration. Um, I think that carried a lot of stuff into it because when you know that someone will lay eyes on this piece um, who actually is referenced in it, you want to make sure that they feel that they're honored. Um, and I imagine there's art that you create that, not, not me personally, but there are pieces that get created that are not about honor, that are about rage or, or frustration at particular people. But for Jackie Shelton Green, it wasn't any of those things, it's love and it's care. And you know, I want her to feel those things because she deserves those things. Um, but beyond that, she puts that into everyone else. So um, the sacredness of this piece was kind of creating this, this quiet place. And it's weird because it's a dark piece. So people say, oh, you can't be, like dark stuff and have it be that it's it's happy. Um, but this is a piece that's like this quiet, calm joy because it's more or less someone's altar. Um, and the way that this piece works is that, um, you know, the concept of manifestation, they've taken these people who are, they're excited about and they're, they're proud of. So um, they're all books written by those authors, Dr. Maya Angelou, Jackie Shelton Green, uh, Charles Waddell Chestnut and George Moses Horton they're sitting on top of this person's writing journal. Um, and there are candles, which are, you know, a big part of altars and, and speaking with ancestors. Um, there's aloe vera here, which talks about healing and growth and, you know, having a leg chopped off and being able to continue on. So there are a lot of uh, <laughs> complicated parts in the process of, of writing and authorship, I'm sure. So it's about perseverance. Um, the sunflowers are special. I think I'm getting long and talking, but the purple is about you know, that's about something as well. So um, really just trying to say, okay, in the best sense of everything, if somebody like Jackie Shelton Green were to encounter this piece, like what would be one of the sweetest things that someone could say, one of the things of most honor, and that would be, you know, I have these things that you wrote in my list of, or in my space for manifestation, because it means that much to me. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, it's not that you want people to say, okay, well, I'm going to be just like you when I grow up, but it's like when people talk about art and there are ways that I inspire them, um, that's one of the most special things that I can feel. So it's like, what's somebody's like, yeah, I started sketching again after encountering you, or I did this because of your work or, um, you know, any of those things that are special, it just, it makes you feel like the work that you're doing matters. So um, to be able to have this piece that exists for a person who's living, who has shown me so much love and so many other people so much love, um, I just really wanted it to be like that high level of this is what it could be and this is what it feels like when someone appreciates your work and the stuff that you're doing. Michelle, did you want to add anything? 
I just, I, I'm just wanting to echo the fact that several of the, um, the letters, W is for writers, as well as I is for ice cream, as well as um, quiet is for um, quilts and, and questions and quiet, um, Q is for quiet and quilt and questions. Those for me represent um, a kind of feeling or, you know, values or even almost like prayers and wishes for black communities. So like a kind of saying, you know, yes, we wanna acknowledge these, these intimate moments of family. Um, these are not, I think aesthetics that are very um, broadly amplified when we talk about black experience, particularly when we think about this summer and the killings of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd and Ahmaud Arbery um, and even more and more and more um, it can become um, extremely heavy to deal with that, those um, waves of grief, despair, and outrage around racial violence. I think it's also, it's important to um, offer ourselves up to hear those stories and to think about how we can prevent be, um, other people becoming, as we say, hashtags. Mm -hmm. um, additionally, how can we create counter narratives? Um, how can we hold on to traditions that are already in place um, or, or kind of resurrect old traditions that are traditions of healing and wholeness, vitality, safety, um, love? And so Q is for quiet and quilt and questions helps to, to be kind of a, a soothing balm for some of the pain um, in this narrative of the experience. Uh, and I would also say uh, W is for writers acknowledges uh, kind of these kinds of spirituality that aren't always, um, you know, celebrated in black, in the black experience. Um, and so, yeah, uh, in this image that Dare is placing now is actually the image that becomes the cover of the book. Um, I think it's almost like an invitation to turn in and to quiet down. Certainly during COVID-19, we're all looking for ways to feel comfort within the, the safety of And with that, what I wanna add on to the very, very important thing that Michelle was saying right now um, is the concept that, you know, the idea of these images and these narratives, they're very important because the, the work that we do um, is really based in trying to make sure that these stories get told because it's not that these pictures get thrown back to us. So being that this is our skill set, this is what we can do, um, being able to be a part of that narrative is something that's really important. Um, and fascinatingly enough, this is this is a person like this side. This is a guy um, on Instagram, he's Puzzle Huddle, but he created um, this company for making puzzles and that's him and his daughters. Um, and the specialness of being able to say, okay, well, the world doesn't see me in a particular way, but like I am a particular way. I am love. I am caring. I do show up for my family and my people. Uh, you know, he's fighting to represent us as, as positive things for children to see in the same way that people with board books are like, okay, well, you know, I'm, I'm looking to find myself in this image. Um, and for so, so long, it's not that we say, okay, here goes um, a picture of, of me in this positive story. Um, as, a, as an illustrator, that's a, that's a big shift in what I'm trying to do, which you know, I did, uh, You're My Sunshine and Now I Lay Me Down to Sleep because those are moments that are reflecting that important stuff. Uh, but uh, when, you, when you take a moment and you say, okay, well, this is the broader picture of what it is that we can be and we're a part of those stories, um, it helps kind of just mitigate the stuff where um, you know, ultimately when people are killed by police officers, it's not because of something that um, you know, in these instances, particularly the ones that are, are frightening are ones where it's not necessarily that, um, you know, there's a, an instance where there's a reason um, or even still justification past that. That's not what I'm trying to say. But it's that, you know, the work that we have to do is not about um, not convincing cops to not shoot Black people. It's about reestablishing our value to ourselves in the face of that being such a recurring thing. Um, and that's, that's, that's rough to do because it's, it's just, it takes a lot and it's stressful and it's painful to always be faced with narrative that says that your life doesn't matter. Um, and it doesn't matter as much. So 
that's that's why we do this stuff. I'm grateful for Dare's art and um and just to use your words in reestablishing the value of life. Yes. Thank you so much, Dare. Thank you. I don't know if we have any more questions in the chat. I would like to. Okay. Uh, I would like to mention that uh, Angela who's a director of the North Carolina African American Heritage Commission, her team, and the State Library of North Carolina, their team. They, again, I think uh, Michelle mentioned this, but they've created an online companion directory that explains the people and places that are in my NC from A to Z. And I would encourage everyone, if they I feel so inclined to go to the state library.ncdcr.libguides.com, my NC from A to Z, to look up that directory, or you can go to the North Carolina African American Heritage Commission website at aahc.nc.gov so that you can look up the current events that are going on. Uh, I would like to mention uh, an upcoming event that Michelle will be a uh, Bring Your Own Black Stories. It's a virtual Q&A and it will be Monday, December 7th from 6 to 7 p.m. It is free. Please go to the African American Heritage Commission site for events and you can sign up for that event and it is free. And uh, do you have any other questions or comments, Michelle or Dare? No, I just I just want to um, thank both of you and I'm grateful to the African American Heritage Commission for continue, continuing to do excellent work um, in support of their mission, which I know is to preserve, promote, and protect North Carolina's African-American history, arts, and culture for all people. And as the director of North Carolina State Historic Sites, I am so honored to always partner with um, you, Sheila, you, Dare, and with the commission um, on our work. Um, I would invite people to um, visit our state historic sites and properties um, virtually and in person. Uh, we have also a lot of beautiful landscapes. So if you are really being careful, which I hope all of us are around this um, very uh, unprecedented time, um, please feel free to enjoy our, our walking trails, our grounds. It's a good way to get fresh air, stretch your limbs and learn something about our rich North Carolina history. Absolutely. Thank you. And with that, at the beginning, um, you know, or in, before we got into this, we were talking about times during COVID and, and the stress. Um, so with, with that importance, um, because this is such an unprecedented time and everything is stressful, uh, Michelle was saying, just reminder to breathe for yourself, like just take a moment to breathe for mm -hmm. you. Um, because you can preserve <laughs> that peace and that joy and that calm. Um, my mom and I illustrated a book called The World is Locked Up that's about finding the bright spots in this time. Um, mm -hmm. And so you get to find a moment where it's like, even if it's just a small part of the fact that we're at home and you can you can watch a plant grow or so, just something small for you, um, because that's really a big part of making it through this has been like making sure that there's stuff to sustain my soul. Um, and I'm sure it's working the same for everyone. So sustain your souls and be out there and just, just um, celebrating the fact that there are people trying really, really hard to make sure that our stories are told in positive and vibrant and beautiful ways. Um, and I, I know this is the final note. So thank you guys. I love you guys. Um, this is the, another another special thing for our, you know, our million years long at this point. <laughs> establishment of this book. So I appreciate you guys and thank you for having me be a part of this sincerely. Well, you both emit life and love and light, and I thank you. Thank you so much for your time and your energy and your knowledge, and I love you. Love, love you, too.
And big love, <laughs> love to all who are watching. Everybody take care of yourselves. Oh, my finger got stuck. <laughs> I was trying to wait. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you.